How did human language develop in the first place? Scientists that devote their time to anthropology, biology, or evolutionary theory have likely come to find a lack of concrete theories concerning language development. However, there are two postulates that have served the scientific community and they're searching for clues to our linguistic history. The two main postulates, or main schools of thought, are vocal and gestural language. The vocal school posits that human language evolved from grunts of our early ape-like ancestors. For instance, evolutionary scientists have theorized that as the population numbers of our species have dramatically increased over time, our animal ancestors had to find new ways of cementing community bonds over long distances. Therefore, scientists have been led to conclude that language evolved to replace grooming, the original form of nonverbal communication in an ape society. The problem with this school of thought is that it cannot account for syntax or proper grammar like, say, the subject-verb-object order of English. On the other hand, the gestural school of thought posits that human language evolved from the hand gestures of our early ancestors. This is because chimps, our closest genetic cousins, mostly communicate through visual and tactile cues like facial expressions, hand and body gestures, and bodily contact. Chimps who have been taught American Sign Language progress at the same rate as human children learning sign language or spoken language. Most importantly, they do not make grammatical mistakes. This is because syntax is built into such gestural movements. You can test it yourself right now by following a suggestion laid out in the book, Gesture and the Nature of Language. If you will, swing your right hand across in front of your body and catch the upraised forefinger of your left hand. By enacting this gesture, you have just illustrated the most primitive form of syntax. The dominant hand is the agent, it acts. Its swinging grasp is the action, verb and the stationary finger is the patient or object. The grammarian symbolic notion for this is familiar, the subject, verb, object. If you imagine our ancestors using this form of gesturing to indicate something like bird caught fish, they use their hand and finger to indicate that there is acting going on. So the relationship between subject, verb, and object is present in this gesture. But how can hand movements lead to oral speaking? Well, the area of the brain that controls detailed movements of the hands also controls the detailed movements of the tongue. Roger Fouts, who is a professor of psychology, taught American Sign Language to a pair of autistic boys who could not speak or even interact in normal social situations. The amazing thing is that these boys gained the ability to speak within a few weeks of learning to sign. Nicholas Wade mentions in his book, Before the Dawn, that people with a mutated version of the FOXP2 gene the brain gene associated with speech, have great trouble in talking because they do not have proper control of their mouth and tongue muscles. FOXP2 is located close to the gene responsible for autism. Therefore, learning to control their hands through sign language helped the autistic boys gain control over their tongues, which allowed them to speak. Researchers have suggested that the FOXP2 gene evolved around 50,000 years ago because human culture exploded after this point, probably due to language. Vocal language is far more effective in transmitting ideas than hand gestures. This suggests that humans used gestural communication for thousands of years before the gene switched on. It is important to note that a 2012 paper entitled Monkey Lip Smacking Develops Like the Human Speech Rhythm points out that the coordination of the jaw, tongue, and hyoid used in primate lip smacking is comparable to that used for human speech. No sound is produced during lip smacking because their vocal cords are in the wrong position. Human vocal cords are lower in our throats. Our vocal cord and tongue anatomy had to change before we could produce the sounds that we do today. So, in conclusion, it seems that the road to human speech involved hand gestures, lip smacking, the dropping of the vocal cords, and the evolution of a brain gene to better control the tongue and mouth muscles. However, there is far more research that needs to be done before we can uncover the true underpinnings of human language.